Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I am over the moon because today I have a very special guest. Of course, Rachel Bilson, we know from the OC. She's been in movies like Jumper, The Last Kiss. Rachel, how are you doing today? Hi, I am so good. I'm so happy to be here. I am like thrilled, Rachel. So I, I got to tell you, <laughs> my boyfriend and I were re-watching the OC from the beginning. And I, wow. it was not. I watched, I remember my freshman, sophomore year of college, the whole dorm floor would gather and we would watch the OC um, and rewatching <laughs> it now has been so fun. That is so awesome that you did that. I hope, you know, you were thoroughly entertained and <laughs> well, <laughs> enjoyed look, yourself. I, I got to be honest, we're at the Oliver episodes right now. And so it's a little bit frustrating. I um, understand. I completely yeah. understand where you're at and how you're feeling. <laughs> Not to dive right into this, but like, what was the vibe on set when Oliver was around? Did you guys all think like, okay, he needs to go? Or what was the vibe? Yeah, we basically just like turned his trailer over and hoped <laughs> that he would run for the hill. No, I'm just kidding. He's super nice. He was so nice. Everyone was nice. Everyone, we were so fortunate to have such amazing guest stars and really cool people and great actors. Um, there was like, yeah, everyone was really cool. Uh, Rachel, you're, uh, starting a project sort of about the OC. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, we're going to start an OC rewatch podcast called welcome to the OC bitches. Um, and it's Melinda Clark played Julie Cooper, uh, Marissa's mom on the show and myself who, you know, started out kind of like the bitches of the OC. So it was fitting. Um, the characters that I always, uh, gravitated towards. Oh, good. I'm so yeah. happy to hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's so fun. So we have to go back and rewatch it. And it's kind of insane rewatching these episodes from like 2003 and the fashion and everything else that comes along with it. It's pretty insane. <laughs> and had, had you rewatched it before sort of going no. back? No. So this is no. the first time. This is the first. It's very frightening. Right. <laughs> you I know, mean, I have... couldn't imagine. How old were you when you did the OC? I was 21 when we did the pilot and I'm seeing platform flip-flops and nothing but bikinis. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> that was a time. <laughs> I'm noticing all the blush. Like I was watching as the, I'm rewatching. I'm like, how much blush was in that makeup trailer? Blush. How about the tanner, the bronzer? Can we talk about that? Because that is next level. That's all I can see. I'm like, oh, wow. We are just yeah. all sorts of shades of tan. <laughs> There's that one clip of you. Uh, it's an early episode when you're in the fashion show and you like come out and you have the <laughs> platforms on and you you do the like sort of hip thing. Um, and you you look amazing, but it's like, though it was such a 2000s moment, if that oh, makes sense. You mean like my winged out seafoam <laughs> green eyeshadow that like went to my ears? That was definitely a choice. <laughs> I loved it, Rachel. Oh, what, well, thank you. <laughs> what was the what was the sort of look that you hate the most looking back and the one you like the most? Is there one that you're like, oh, that should come back? Oh my gosh. You know, I have to get a little further into it to kind of assess every outfit, but you know, juicy suits were a big thing, but they've they're kind of coming back right now. Right. right. So, you know, it just kind of speaks to that whole history repeating itself. I'm okay. Which with I want. Th I want those to come back. I just want them to be like higher, you know, higher waist, uh, higher, yeah, like, low waist. Yeah, right. I agree. They should have the high waisted version of the juicy suit. Right. I am with you. Right. Um, yeah, but I would, you know, the bikini tops and jean skirts. I think can just live in 2003 and not resurface. <laughs> I think Melinda <laughs> Clark was always in the juicy. Always. Always. That was her yeah. uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the two of you, did you guys keep in touch over the years or has this been kind of fun to get back together? And Well, here and there, but not much. I hadn't seen her or spoken to her much. So it's really fun to get to be hanging out again and talking again. And she's just so cool. And when we started, she had a three-year-old, you know, I have a six-year-old now. So it's kind of interesting how, you know, to talk about that aspect as well. Um, but she's just so so rad. You know, it's a weird rewatching it uh, now. And I'm so gravitating toward the adult storylines. And when I watched it, when it aired, 
I remember thinking like, oh, they're they're so old, like Julie and Sandy, like they're they're like the old crew. And now I'm like, oh my God, they were young when they were doing the show. Melinda but, was like 32. I'm like, holy crap. Uh, <laughs> uh, so where are you guys at so far in sort of like your rewatch? We're at the very beginning still. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything you're nervous to kind of get to? Like plot uh, lines? Uh, you know, what's funny is I don't remember a lot of them. So we're watching them and I'm like, I had, or if, you know, there's some like trivia coming up and I cannot answer a single question. Like I just have no (laughs) clue of what went down, what was happening. So it's going to be beneficial for me to (laughs) rewatch. Whenever I have guests on this show, I'm always like asking about something they filmed in 2001 or something. And they're like, I don't fucking remember. And I'm like, like, what? I know every detail. <laughs> Only um, someone does. <laughs> have you noticed there's been uh, I mean I mentioned I'm rewatching it but I think because of the pandemic you know people are going back to a lot of those comfort shows things sure. that they watch when they were younger that are nostalgic and have you noticed especially with HBO Max now airing the OC um have you noticed sort of a new generation or or are people rewatching it a lot and reaching out on social media? You know, I, I am noticing that people are discovering it, um, which is cool. Like, I'll see comments. Uh, I ran into Olivia Wilde a couple of years back at an event, and she told me that she was either around or working with younger, maybe college kids, and they were going up to her about the OC. And she's like, it's really cool. It's like this resurgence of people discovering it, which I thought was so awesome, um, you know, for something to just still or just to come up and people still be into it. Right. Uh, so Rachel, take me back to that pilot because you weren't originally part of the main cast, right? Like no. you were just a guest star. Yeah. I was a guest star, I think for like the first eight episodes. Um, but Josh Schwartz, the creator just liked, you know, my character. And I guess, I guess what I was doing with the character and liked the, you were the best one, Rachel. Vibe. You were the best. One. <laughs> well, you have to say that right now. No, I'll I take swear it. to God. I swear to God. <laughs> I love you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he liked just this, you know, what was progressing with Seth and Summer. And so that's what happened. And thank goodness it did. So this show then becomes sort of a, a cultural phenomenon in such a very short time. I, I think when I, looking back, I sort of thought it had lasted longer than it did because it yeah. was such a fever pitch of, of hype and media and everything like that. So I don't know, are you able to sort of look back on that time and, and remember what it was like going through that whirlwind? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was pretty young, but I do remember sort of this overnight kind of attention and and whatnot from it, which was really interesting. But, you know, we were in it together, uh, just kind of going as I guess I do in life, just go with the flow. You know, I'm a pretty like easygoing person. So I didn't take anything too seriously, but it was definitely fun and cool to be doing something that people were really into and enjoying. You know, it came about at a time in media that we're sort of reinspecting now. I don't know if you saw the Framing Britney Spears documentary that was on I Hulu. Yet. Yeah, it, it's yet. really it's really fascinating. Um, but it's looking through the lens of of now back at how people, uh, specifically young women in the media, were treated back in those early two thousands. Uh, I mean, even your co star Misha. And you had kind of, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you had sort of stayed away from a lot of the tabloid culture. You weren't as, as sort of present as, as Misha or some of the other contemporaries. Right. Was that purposeful? I think, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I think because I was in a relationship, you know, at the time, a little more domesticated, we were a little bit like old people as a couple. And yeah, I wasn't getting out of cars. You're talking about you and Adam, Adam Brody, right? Yeah, I I was, I was with Adam at the time. Yeah. And uh, maybe because we were together and sort of had each other at that time, uh, it sort of took away from going out to all the clubs and doing all that stuff. I had done it a bit when I was younger before the OC, because I grew up in Los Angeles. So that played into it as well. Um, But yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm not, much of a drinker, partier type person. Like I want to stay home and watch Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, me too. Did you see Katie Couric on Jeopardy? She's I so, didn't, she but was I heard, great. yeah, she I heard she was great. great. I will see it and yeah. record it. <laughs> um, so are you able to kind of uh, look back and do you have any thoughts on how young women were treated by the media at that time? I find it so, so discouraging. Even there's been online a lot of 
old Letterman interviews that have come up that we're, we're sort of able to see and and see how he treated young women and, and all sorts of different people. I don't want to just single him out. And and right. some of it was a product of the time, but some of it we look back on and it's it's tough. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I saw that Letterman was being called out for a few interviews, but I didn't watch the interviews, so I don't know exactly what was said. Um, but it's just a, such a different time now with all of the awareness that should have always been there. But you go back and you're like, how could this just have happened, you know, in this century with women being treated the way that they have, you know, especially during that time. And I want to watch the Britney deck documentary because I know they cover a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I love Britney. I always have huge fan, Um, but I'm just so happy. It's actually, you know, coming to light now. So maybe something can actually be done about it. Yeah. There was also, I I know Misha, your co-star had appeared on the new Hills reboot and talked a little bit about, that too. And, and she was in the eye of the storm quite often. And yeah, it's just so upsetting to me that, um, you know, and, and we were all consuming it. Like I remember at the time going on the websites, the, the gossip blogs and, and reading it every single day. And I don't know. Yeah. It's tough. It was very, uh, relevant at the time, sort of, you know, it was prominent, all of that stuff being on the front cover, like, I can't imagine. Misha was, I think, 16 when we started. I cannot imagine being 16 years old and projected into that level of stardom for her. You know, I right. I, I can't imagine. That's got to be pretty tough. Right. Uh, you know, Tate Donovan, he mm-hmm. played uh, Marissa Cooper's dad on the show. He had said in Vulture that the young cast had become difficult during the third season and beyond because... Uh, you know, it was such a cultural phenomenon. And I wonder, was that the case in your experience or what happened there? You know, I love Tate. I think he is a wonderful actor, director, and person. Um, my own personal experience, I, I've i always been grateful for the show and what it brought me. Um, I can't really speak for other people, you know, that were on the show, but I think anytime you're on something for a long time, you can tend to get an itch to do something else. So maybe that played into it, but that definitely wasn't my case. Right. Uh, They're rebooting all these shows. We're going to, we're going to get an OC reboot. I need it. Can you tell, (laughs) can you confirm or deny? I'm going to text Josh right now. (laughs) Listen, I know you guys are buddies, right? Because you worked on Heart of Dixie too, which. Oh yeah. yeah. No, Josh is like my brother basically. Um, So we have maintained a very close special relationship. Uh, Yeah. Literally my brother. <laughs> so uh, what, uh, when are we getting it, Rachel? Tell me, I need answers. <sighs> November 13th, 2080. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, it would be, I don't know like where the stories would be at, you know, uh, there's definitely many ways you could go. Obviously Misha's character died in the third season. So can you resurrect someone? Why not? It's television. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, we don't need, we don't necessarily need Misha. I mean, I'm happy as long as we just get Summer, Julie Cooper, <laughs> a, a, Sandy, a, a Sandy appearance. A Sandy Oops. and some bagels and schmear. I got some bagel. <laughs> My boyfriend knew I was interviewing. He got me a bagel this morning. That's he, so sweet. I know. What a nice Isn't boyfriend. Yes. Um, I also had a biggest crush on Luke, too. I mean, he was a sexual yeah. awakening for almost every <laughs> young gay man my age. Like, a sexual awakening. That's, <laughs> that's you know what? Chris is such a nice, good guy. Um, yeah, that would be a good person to pin that on. <laughs> I mean, I remember him on the Abercrombie bag, like when I would go yeah. to the mall and it's like, he was everything to me. And re- even rewatching now, I'm like, I don't even know how I would have been able to be on the set with that man, with that jawline and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> uh, was it weird? Uh, you mentioned your relationship with Adam Brody. Was it weird to kind of uh, go on? Is, forgive me. Did you guys break up before the series had ended? Um, or, or was I th- it? I think all it was toward. I think it was towards the end. Uh, so was it hard to finish that up when you're with your ex? Uh, no, no. Um, yeah. you know, it, Adam's a great, like, cool guy, and we had a good time on the show together. You know, our characters had a great time on the show together, and so I think that just carried over. Right. Uh, you dated sort of all my crushes in real life. Cause did I? Like, yeah. Like Bill hate. I, 
still to this day, Bill Hader is like the <laughs> cutest. And then Adam Brody, Hayden Christensen. I mean, come yeah. on. You know, yeah. got all the... I can't complain. I cannot complain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So do you have a favorite episode of the show? A I know people episode. probably ask you that stupid question all the time. No, you know what? I haven't been asked that. And huh? like I said, I have no memory, but I do remember like dressing up as Wonder Woman. And Iconic. I feel like that one is something. I have to rewatch it. And the raining one with the Spider-Man kiss, that stands out in my mind. Let's just go with one of those. <laughs> uh, I asked people on the Everything Iconic Patreon page to send in questions. And so many people were asking about the heart of Dixie. Uh, specifically, somebody had asked, um, forgive me, I might miss this. Uh, Emily wants to know the status of the Heart of Dixie reboot. Would you rather do a reboot of Heart of Dixie or the OC? Well, I would love if I had the chance to do both. I'm going to say that. I like that. Thanks. I like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, about a year ago, I had rewatched The Last Kiss, which I had remembered being obsessed with when it came out. <laughs> like, I thought it was the greatest. It was post-Garden State Zach Braff. Right. And, and I mean, speaking of sort of looking back on things, rewatching it, I had a different sort of feeling. Interesting. Rewatching this this movie about these men and and your character specifically is almost sort of painted as the villain for sleeping with Zach Braff, even though he's the one who cheated on his pregnant girlfriend. Right. I remember purposely playing her as more likable. So I didn't get the rap of the villain and the girl going after the guy, you know, it's like kind of that same thing that we're talking about with how women were treated and, and whatnot. So I remember purposely playing her as likable as possible for that reason. That was a great, that was so much fun to make and an incredible cast. And I have the best memories from that shoot. And the soundtrack too is just amazing. Oh, the soundtrack, course, yeah. And but... Zach is still a good friend of mine. He's just so talented. Yeah. I would imagine though it, it probably was frustrating to read scripts at that time. I mean, we've come far and obviously we still have so, so much ways to go. But as a young woman getting scripts like that, where it's like centered on the men and they get to do all the... I don't know if I'm making sense. What? <laughs> centered oh, no. on the men. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, always centered trying. on the men. What? What? No. Uh, it is. I mean, a lot of it, you know, but I think they really are making an effort, at least in Hollywood, to push women at the forefront, um, put them at the forefront, rather, and create these shows, movies with them at the helm. Us. Them. Right. I guess I'm a woman. Yeah. Us. Um. Would uh, you have a child now? Is there, mm -hmm. would you let your child rewatch the OC? At what point do you think rewatching would be appropriate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at 35, yes. Uh, I mean, someday, maybe when she's older, yeah. I mean, that'll be pretty crazy. <laughs> Uh, so I want to get to some of these other questions that people wrote in for you. Kristen Baker yeah. said uh, she'd love to know your favorite memory. Um, is there any specific scene or or episode that was actually just memorable to shoot? Um, you know, I have really fun memories in the beginning of us pranking each other. That was super fun. Uh, I remember on my birthday, we had like a biology scene and there were real dead frogs, which I'm sure you can't do anymore. It's probably really, <laughs> you know, PETA will have a fit. But it's be CGI he put one, now. yeah, it has to be CGI. But he put one in a box, like as a present. <laughs> for my birthday. So when I got home and opened it, there was a dead frog, but that's like a fun memory. You know, we were all very playful with each other and liked each other. <laughs> were there ever any other crushes you had at the time? Because I mean, uh, hormones were running wild for me at 21. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, crushes from the show. Oh, that's hard to say. I mean, I was enamored with Olivia Wilde because she's the shit. <laughs> she's like stunning too, isn't she? Just oh my like, God. She's yeah. ridiculously beautiful. I love her so much. Such a good person. Um, yeah. yeah, but my hormones were kept in check. There were a lot of pretty amazing guest stars on the show. Chris Pratt, obviously. And oh my God. Who was your, your favorite? Well, Chris Pratt, I actually had a lot of the scenes with and I have never laughed harder at someone. Um, and you know, I've experienced some funny people. He is so funny, his jokes, everything, the way he tells stories. Um, yeah, I, I loved working with him. Right. Uh, Jenny Armstrong wants to know, what do you think summer would be up to today for the reboot we're getting for sure? 
What would you be up to? I mean, she probably has some kids, right? God, how, would she have teenagers? Okay, that's that's totally frightening. Okay, I know. We'd have to figure out if this reboot is going to be centered on the kids of the cast or what's going to be going on. But also, I'm going to still need Julie Cooper to pop in. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, sorry, Which... I had like dinging going on. And no, I it's okay. Turn off my messages. There's dinging going right. on in my head right now because I'm just thinking of this reboot of like what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> reboot. Yeah, the reason uh, yeah. why I think a reboot would really be really great is because we could do a short in order now. You guys were doing like 27 episodes a season. Oh my god, yeah. 27 which is like too nine much. months a year. It, it was very long. I don't even think they do that anymore, if no. I'm not mistaken. And hour-long episodes, you know, they take a long time to shoot. <laughs> right. Like you, you guys are probably exhausted. I don't think people realize like that many episodes of per season is a lot of workload. It's a lot for of the work. actors, for the writers. For and, sure. Yeah, storylines. I mean. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with that. And then when you're you wrap, it's not like you want to go and do anything else because you're pretty pretty beat after that. But you know, you can't complain when you're getting to do what you love to do. But it is a lot of work for sure. Right. Uh, yeah. So you guys could do like eight episodes for HBO Max, and it'd be good. We'd be good to go. Yeah. Hey, I'm with you. Let's make it happen. <laughs> call up Josh. Let's call up Josh. Oh, right now. Um, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> I'm so annoying. I'm sorry. Hannah no. Weinstock wants to know uh, what your relationship with Misha was like off screen. And do you still keep in touch with her or the other cast? There was like a moment in Elle as I was doing my research where people yeah. thought that she shaded you in Elle magazine. What did she say? I mean, I, know I don't you know, know what I should say. No, um, I, I think I wrote it down. Tell me what she said. And then I'll she said something about it. your, I, I, I don't even want to repeat it because it was about looks and it was, People had taken it to think she was talking about you. She said, I'm very tall and lengthy and Rachel's more voluptuous. Um, and rereading it, I don't know that she shaded you for sure. No, she's not wrong. Yeah. Listen, I may be little and short, but I'm definitely, you know, I have my curves, but I'm proud of that. That doesn't bother me. Right. And um, you're both stunning. Me, yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. That's very kind. We, we definitely got along while we were shooting. I, I loved Misha. We, you know, we definitely, I haven't spoken to her or seen her in probably at least 10 years or so. If, I don't even, couldn't even tell you last time, but um, yeah, we definitely got along while we were doing the show. And like I said, she was so young, you know, getting into this. So. And by the way, she was also, you mentioned she was 16 and the rest of you were around 21 and older, which that might not be a lot in years, but I feel like that's a lot in development or, you know, uh, 21 and 16 is just completely different. I, I think. Yeah. Oh, what I was like at 16 versus 21. Yeah. You're a different person. So yeah. definitely different stages of life for sure. Uh, Ashley Van Meter wants to know, uh, did you keep any outfits from the show? You know, I don't think I did. I wish I could have, or would have. I don't think I have anything. I do have my personal Uggs that I wore on set that I remember Adam Brody and Samira Armstrong both drawing on one of them. Um, and I still have those. Like Adam drew the faces of Ben and him, maybe himself and then eyebrows for Peter. It's pretty funny. Oh, I have those somewhere. <laughs> you know, the Anna character, the episode we watched last night, you guys were in Palm Springs. I'm acting mm -hmm. as if this just happened like yesterday, but you yeah, guys it filmed it forever ago. Uh, but <laughs> Anna's wearing like a negligee over a t-shirt and it's the most bizarre. <laughs> She's in really? bed, negligee over the t-shirt. Blush to the guy. I mean, literally the rosiest cheeks I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh yeah. And you were talking about the blush. I guess in bed. I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. In bed. Um, it was a lot. Okay. It was um, a lot. <laughs> let's see here. I'm going to uh, look out for that. I'm sorry about the text beeping. Like I said, tech, I don't, no, don't even figure out how to turn it off. Rachel, I'm sorry. Please. I don't. You're fine. And it was Josh that just texted me, which is ironic. Um, oh, Hey Josh. Special hey. appearance. Um, Emily Gosh hey. wants to know, uh, what are you watching now? What do you binge? You know, the only thing that I really, uh, probably The Bachelor, anything Bachelor re okay. related, because I like to just lay in bed and watch that. <laughs> Tell me what you're thinking of The um, Bachelor World. I did Bridgerton, world. of course. What are you thinking of The Bachelor World? The Bachelor World. There's a lot going just on. in general. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Like Chris Harrison stepped back. You know, again, all these things are coming to light. I mean, hey, if it's making people more aware, that's awesome. You know, did, did you like what did you think of the Matt James season? All right, did you like what's so your I thought? haven't finished it yet? Okay, but I already saw something online, whatever. But right. I thought he was so genuine and sweet. 
Like I really got a good genuine vibe from him from the get go. Right. Um, some of the girls were pretty funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be curious. I, I, I don't actually know who won yet. Did they say who won? I don't even know. I don't know. Yet. I'll be honest. I watched last. I watched the Tasha Claire Dale season. Right. And then I got sort of burnt out because the La Quinta Inn felt so suffocating to me. Oh, I, could, I agree. I like couldn't be at the La Quinta Inn anymore and I needed no, a break. I know. So I will tell you with The Bachelor, because they were somewhere else, it made it feel more like normal Bachelor with the dates and the things they were doing. It was a little more elaborate than like Justin, you know. Right. They got a bigger Tele Valley or whatever. I mean, I could, I could not do it. I would break by the end of that season and I was recapping it and I'm like, I can't recap this anymore. Like I'm so yeah. sick, even though I love Tasha, I so, and I sort of missed Claire cause Claire was to me like great TV, even though I know people in bachelor world didn't really love Claire. Right. I thought no, she I, was I know great what you TV. Mean. Yeah. She was just very like, no, like, I don't care. I'm in love with this guy from like the first second I met him. And she was just like, no, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> like, yeah, she was definitely entertaining for sure. Mm. And I didn't finish it. Her and Dale. Um, Her and Dale. And what did you think of Bridgerton? You mentioned Bridgerton. I loved it. Yeah. What's not to like? I mean, the Duke walked on screen and you're like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Emily wants to know what you thought of Polly Walker in it. Julie, was Julie Cooper in Bridgerton? Polly I, Walker? I don't know what that means. We'll just skip that. I don't that. know what that means. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Emily also wants to know anything you missed from the early aughts. Like, I know we sort of talked about fashion, but is there like something you think back on? And I miss living in my condo with my best friend. That's what I miss. We were young. It was a fucking pigsty. It was a disaster. It's and it was great. And we had a drawer solely dedicated to Taco Bell sauce. Uh, I don't want to embarrass myself, but I still do with my boyfriend. We have a drawer that's got Taco Bell sauce in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I necessarily mean, dedicated, but we have a about, But yeah. Oh no, I have, I still have one too. We also have like, there's certain barbecue sauces I like. That's neither here yeah. nor there, but. Listen, I hear you. Sweet and sour McDonald's. You know, I, I don't know if I apologize. Just tell me to, yeah. you don't want to answer, but did you ever see the bling ring, which was a movie that was sort of based on those like. Right. No, I never, or, we can talk about it. I'm fine talking about it. No, I never saw it though. And <laughs> she are. Are you familiar with like, so Alexis Nyers has sort of really changed. She was part of that whole thing. And and right. now she, she runs a rehab facility and she's really like sort of, done, is it 180 or 360 to her life? Um, but I what wonder else? if you had heard of any of <laughs> any of that or, or been familiar with any of that and what your thoughts were. No, I didn't know that she had had this like life-changing uh, a moment. Uh, but that's great. I think if anyone can take something and turn it into something great, good and positive, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, it was kind of crazy at the time. Like, I guess they, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, guess, I guess they came into my house five different times and took everything. And even like one girl gave an interview. She's like, I got so comfortable going in her house. I took a shit in her bathroom. And I was uh. like, okay, that's more invasive than stealing my purses. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, they were young and hopefully the others learned as well. Who knows? I mean, that's all you can hope for at this point. It must have been so scary, though, to be at such a young age. I mean, I'm I'm I would be terrified right now um, in my 30s if something like that happened um, to be so young in your case and for that to be happening and then to hear it happen multiple times. Like I couldn't even imagine the emotional toll that would take. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So. <laughs> It happened to me again, like three years ago, I was robbed at a house I was renting. And at that point I was like, well, it really teaches you to detach yourself from material possessions. Wow. I literally was like, well, here we go again. All right. Wow. Good thing I've like yeah. trained myself not to get too attached. Yeah. I, that's so uh, interesting. It's a, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's not fun, but it's at least it's a good lesson. Yeah. Did you ever get the stuff back? I don't know. No. And I'm like, who's wearing a size five shoe? Like, what are you going to do with back. these shoes, people? Right. Give, it, Give back. it back. You never saw that pretty wild show about. Uh, what? It, no. What, what, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was with Alexis Nyers. It was like, oh, that. got it. She had no. a reality show. It's a really good reality show, but I'm sure you don't watch it. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I have some questions. Uh, these first two are things I ask every guest. Their favorite Mariah Carey song. I love Mariah Carey, so I, oh. I always ask people. Uh, 
Walk by every night. What's that one? Talking sweet and That just came to my mind. Or always be my baby. Always be my baby. So I'll good. That one. So good. I can't. Um, There's so many. If you were choosing for People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive, who would you choose? Larry David. Next question. Oh, he's sexy. I like that. <laughs> Obsessed. Um, okay. So these, this is sort of like an, uh, an OC-ish lightning round. Okay. Um, Jessica Simpson nothing. or Ashley Simpson? Blech. I don't. Oh. <laughs> Ty. No, I didn't mean like that towards them. <laughs> I, know. I meant the question. <laughs> no, I love them. I think they're awesome. Yeah. I can't okay. pick. Next you can't question. pick. Did you have an AOL screen name back in the day? Of course. Who didn't? What can you share what it was? It was like Rachel 81, something really easy and not fun. Mine was e- not fun either. And I, I, I always ask people this and they always have like such clever names. And mine was just Pellegrino 48. Like my last name was so boring. Yeah. And no, everyone boring. What do you mean? It's iconic. But I remember thinking at the time, I thought we were going to have that forever. And I thought I'm going to be prepared to keep this forever. Right. Right. You're like, <laughs> I, I didn't want something cheesy. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about like future job interviews or something. I hear you. That was very um, smart. Uh, who was the most fun on set of the OC? Who was the most fun? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Mindy. Melinda uh, Clark. She was always uh, in a good mood. The other ones we sort of already went through, but um, quickly, Jumper. I love that movie too. And there, there was like, supposed to be a sequel. Yeah, I did. Was there going to be a sequel at one time? Like what happened to the sequel? I think they were talking about it but it never happened. I feel like Doug Lyman's done something with it for like YouTube red or something, but I don't, don't quote me on that. I don't know for sure. I feel like you must've been really easy to work with because you worked with Josh again on the heart of Dixie. You work with <laughs> yeah. Doug Lyman who directed the OC pilot. He did. On he did. I love Doug. I know. I was very fortunate to get to work with him a couple of times. He's just a genius. So but, I imagine you were just a gem. Like you had to be. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Rachel, this was so fun. Uh, it was so fun. Were there any other roles at that time you lost out on that you think back and like you were so close to getting? You know what's funny? And this will be a, just a little tidbit. I was up for a role in Everwood right before the OC pilot and I didn't get it. And someone who looked very similar to me did. And I was so bummed. But then the OC audition came about and I got that. And I was like, that's why. Another life lesson. Listen, it all this has been all about life lessons, this interview. <laughs> right. It all works out. It all works out in the end. Uh, Rachel, tell people where they can find you online and, and, and anything else you could tell us about this podcast that's coming up. Or, or if you know, I don't know if yeah. you guys have the launch date no, yet. No, we don't okay. have the launch date yet. It'll probably be beginning of April. But um, yeah, Welcome to the OC Bitches is our podcast. It'll be everywhere you can find podcasts, which you know more about than I do. Um, and right now, you know, my Instagram is just my name. Another really genius. Mine too. Mine's the same. To come yeah. up. I mean, come on. AOL we need, we need to get more Insta. creative, Rachel. I think that's the point I know. here. <laughs> Let's just do one together, a joint one, and be okay. like the most creative name. I love that. <laughs> Uh, well, Rachel, honestly, such a, a pleasure and a delight. You are, I, I'm not even just saying I'm my favorite on the OC and, and I've loved watching your career. You're always so great in everything you do. And, and I hope and pray we get that OC reboot and it, maybe if we do, you can come back. But, um, in the meantime, I'm so excited for the podcast and thank, thank you. you for taking the time. Yeah. It was so nice talking to you. Bye Rachel. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day.